Hello everyone, and welcome back to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we'll be delving into the book, When Genius Failed, authored by Roger Lowenstein. Introduction. Discover the story of a hedge fund that attempted to outsmart the market and ultimately faced its downfall. Have you ever heard the tale of Icarus? He was given wings to fly, but he let hubris drive him to great heights until his wings melted, leading to his tragic fall. This cautionary fable resonates with the story of Long-Term Capital Management LTCM, a colossal hedge fund that soared to great heights only to crash disastrously. These summaries serve as a crucial reminder that no matter how influential a company may seem, it cannot outwit the market. In this summary, you'll explore 1. Why human behavior often defies rationality 2. The limitations of academic expertise in financial advisory Key Idea 1 Long-term capital management was a massive hedge fund that thrived on arbitrage. Long-term capital management, LTCM, a now-defunct fund management company, played a significant role in the 1997 Asian financial crisis and the 1998 Russian default. LTCM, founded in 1994 by trader John Merriweather, was a hedge fund that managed investments by wealthy individuals. Unlike mutual funds, hedge funds faced minimal regulation, granting them flexibility in investment choices, including riskier financial products like derivatives. Arbitrage was LTCM's primary strategy. It involved buying or selling financial products with the expectation that their prices would change favorably in the near future. LTCM leveraged academic calculations, predictions, and advanced software to identify and exploit opportunities rapidly. This strategy propelled LTCM to become the largest hedge fund ever. So, what led to its downfall? Key Idea 2. LTCM relied heavily on leverage to maximize profits. Hedge funds, aiming to profit from small discrepancies in financial product prices, required substantial investments to generate meaningful returns. Despite substantial investments from wealthy clients, LTCM found it necessary to leverage, borrow money to amplify potential returns. Many banks eagerly provided large loans to LTCM because they believed its strategy carried little inherent risk. LTCM placed bets on financial anomalies, such as changes in interest rates, which were considered minimally affected by market fluctuations. They borrowed extensively, accumulating significant debt. Banks like Dresdener Bank in Germany and Banco Garantia in Brazil saw LTCM as a guaranteed profit, lending substantial amounts. To illustrate their leveraging capability, with just $1.25 billion in investment capital, LTCM could borrow about $20 billion. However, banks failed to fully grasp the risks involved, leading to LTCM's dangerously high leverage. Now that you have an understanding of LTCM's core strategy, let's explore the subsequent key points demonstrating its rise and fall. Key Idea 3. LTCM merged academic knowledge with investment banking. Despite the perceived gap between academic theories and real-world finance, LTCM sought to bridge it. They recruited renowned economists and traders, including Nobel Prize winners like Myron S. Scholes and Robert C. Merton, to serve on their board of directors. This strategy attracted numerous investors, including universities like St. John's University, which invested $10 million. What intrigued investors was LTCM's claim to eliminate risk, thanks to its academic approach. Unlike many sales-driven investments, LTCM openly acknowledged potential downsides. Their confidence stemmed from complex mathematical models, derived from historical market analysis, aiming to predict and mitigate risks and crises. This academic approach became a significant draw for investors, contributing to LTCM's massive success. Key Idea 4. LTCM's unprecedented success outshone other hedge funds in the 1990s. The 1990s witnessed a surge in hedge fund popularity, seen as profitable and exciting financial products. LTCM stood out, not only for its popularity but also for its borrowing capacity. During the mid-1990s, LTCM surpassed the size of the second-largest mutual fund by two and a half times and dwarfed its closest hedge fund competitor by four times. Banks vied to lend to LTCM, given their substantial lendable capital and the desire to be part of its success. They offered loans at minimal fees, even using rates they employed when lending to each other. Despite these advantageous terms, LTCM paid $100 to $200 million annually in bank credits, 
highlighting their growing risk. While LTCM enjoyed immense admiration, its true financial condition remained obscured. They reported their assets and liabilities quarterly to banks and monthly to investors, often providing vague summaries. Key Idea 5. LTCM's models prompted them to take a risky strategy during the 1997 Asian crisis. Despite the popularity of LTCM's academic models, they had one critical flaw. They failed to account for human behavior. The models assumed that the financial system operated rationally and predictably, which wasn't the case. Human beings are inherently irrational and prone to panic, which posed a significant problem for LTCM. The trouble began during the 1997 Asian crisis when the booming tiger economies, such as Indonesia and South Korea, faced a downturn. This limited LTCM's safe investment options. In uncertain times, conventional wisdom would lead investors to bonds for their security, despite lower profitability. LTCM, however, chose a different path based on their models, which advised increasing investments in riskier equities during crises. They followed this strategy, investing heavily in paired shares, even without a deep understanding of these products. Their models suggested that everything would work out. While they experienced some profit decline when the crisis hit in the summer of 1997, they persisted, relying on their models, which eventually led them to their downfall. Key Idea 6. The real crisis unfolded when LTCM's models failed. LTCM's models operated on the assumption that disrupted markets would naturally revert to their equilibrium state, similar to a swing returning to rest after being pushed. This belief prompted LTCM to adopt risky strategies during the Asian financial crisis, expecting a swift market stabilization and substantial profits. However, reality didn't align with their models. The market didn't return to normal, and people continued to act irrationally, favoring safer investments like bonds over equities. LTCM's models urged them to defy this trend and take greater risks, leading to months of losses, a first in LTCM's history. LTCM's large size hindered its ability to profit from these risky investments. As losses mounted, their high leverage rate became a burden, compelling them to persist with risky strategies in hopes of covering their debts. Reversing course was no longer an option, they had to press on. Finally, the models completely failed, and reality caught up with LTCM. Key Idea 7. LTCM's last days were marked by seemingly impossible events. LTCM's models calculated the probability of losing everything in a single year as nearly impossible. However, on August 17, 1998, the impossible occurred. The Russian government defaulted on its debts and devalued its currency. This event sent shockwaves through the market, and no one, not even the IMF, intervened to assist Russia. Investors realized that they were not always guaranteed protection. This realization triggered a mass exodus from global markets, with people seeking the safety of secure bonds. This was disastrous for LTCM. Despite their calculations, LTCM's losses far exceeded expectations, reaching $533 million in a single day. They were compelled to sell assets quickly to remain solvent, but there were few buyers. Banks and organizations that were interested in hedge funds held a strong bargaining position, exacerbating LTCM's losses. Key Idea 8. The fear of a major financial crisis led to LTCM's rescue. As LTCM teetered on the brink of collapse, banks, many of which had previously bet against LTCM, realized the risk to their investments. With numerous banks having invested in LTCM, its bankruptcy would have devastating consequences for the market. Banks and investors explored ways to take control of LTCM and rescue it. LTCM resisted initially, fearing that seeding control would jeopardize their earnings. However, as their situation deteriorated, they had no choice. The challenge was finding a buyer for such a massive fund, given its size. A single bank could not rescue LTCM alone. The Federal Reserve stepped in to coordinate a consortium of banks with combined resources capable of addressing LTCM's crisis. This consortium succeeded in saving LTCM, but in their desperation, they granted LTCM's leader significant negotiating power. For example, despite LTCM's failure, county founder John Merriweather retained his assets and avoided personal debt, eventually returning with a new hedge fund. While LTCM initially enjoyed remarkable success, its overall performance revealed a stark contrast, 
losing 77% of its capital while average investors more than doubled their money. Indeed, as evident in the trajectory of one of the largest hedge funds in United States history, it becomes clear that even the most sophisticated models cannot shield investors from the unpredictable and irrational actions of their fellow human beings. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends and family.